Back before we ever heard a peep about Death Stranding, before we knew about Hideo Kojima, Guillermo del Toro, and Norman Reedus were all buddies by some delightful twist of fate, we saw a reveal trailer for Silent Hills. That was way back in 2014, believe it or not, and shortly after, P.T. would release. And what an achievement it was. It was literally a singular corridor, forcing the player to walk down it over and over again, and with subtle changes every time, just to get under our skin. It showed the sheer potential for what Kojima could do with horror, which only made it all the more painful when the Kojima-Konami disagreement went down. It's not official, but I reckon Kojima had something to say about Konami's plans to focus on mobile and pachinko machines. Just imagine that meeting room that day. Whew. Silent Hills would be the first of several disappointing game cancellations. We were living in a time where Prey 2 was cancelled. This offered free-running, open-world bounty hunter action. It looked bloody great. And Star Wars 1313 was going to be the first attempt at Star Wars Answers to Uncharted before the EA Visceral debacle. And each of them offered a strongly fan-focused outing, a fan base in each case that had waited such a long time to hear some good news, only to eventually be let down. Of all the disappointments of the time, the first of them was the cancellation of Silent Hills, and it would cut the deepest. Metal Gear Solid 5's desperately clunky closing moments serving as a painful reminder of Kojima's bust-up with Konami. And not only was Silent Hills cancelled, but there wasn't a hope in hell of it ever coming back, as the same could be said of any future collaboration between Konami and Kojima. And the cold, hard nature of this fact would actually come with a silver lining. In the face of such disappointment, several fans with the skill set to do so would have a crack at rebuilding a thing all on their own. The most notable of these attempts would come from someone by the online name of Kimzar, who actually got super close to delivering the real deal. It turned out various staff at Konami were fans of his work, but despite that, there are certain legal aspects I won't pretend to understand that meant Kimzar's work had to go. The fuckers got to go! Go! The fuckers got to go! In the end, the kid got an internship at Konami. Silver lining? Hardly anyone's first choice. We all know that Konami-related catchphrase. But to land an internship like that? after working on just one game-related project, it's not bad going. And since we're on the topic, it's pretty weird that Konami is so hell-bent on erasing this thing from all existence. They're no longer invested in releasing a title like this in the future, because, as I say, they're now just focusing on mobile, sports titles, and bloody pachinko machines. Perhaps it's just to spite Kojima, who knows? As if taking his name off the Metal Gear Solid 5 box wasn't enough, You'd think they'd try to remove Metal Gear Solid 5 from all existence if it weren't for their money-grabbing schemes with Survive, which of course failed spectacularly. So after all this drama has played out, with all of this in mind, it's pretty clear that for one reason or another, Konami would quite like to see PT evaporate into thin air, even after all these years, never to be remembered by the annals of gaming history. Of course, this is never going to happen. People are going to be talking about PT for at least as long as Kojima is alive. Despite all of this, it hasn't stopped Arta Lachowski, sorry Arta if I've pronounced that incorrectly, from picking up where Kimzar left off. Like Kimzar, he's rebuilding PT from the ground up. Upon the uploading of this video, he's actually working on updates for his version. PT Remake, it's called, and he's designing it with Unreal Engine 4. I have played what he has made so far, and it is basically identical, save for a few things like the room you originally woke up in and a short stairwell on the other end of the corridor. But don't get me wrong, though, I shit my pants just as much as I did all those years ago. Now, I'm not here to gloat about the fact that I've played it or anything. I mean, given the game's history, to have played any semblance of the thing is a really big deal, let alone for this professional representation, something that is just this good good. You can play it yourselves as well, and I'll put a download link in the description below. Check it out guys, it's really easy to get it, uh, so that you can experience firsthand what I'm talking about. If you are in the slightest bit interested, the file is only half a gigabyte, which you can then extract. The only mulligan is, yes, you're only going to be doing this on a PC, but you better grab it quick, because it's a little known secret right now, but who knows how long it'll be until Konami shuts this thing down as well. Arthur is actually so determined to bring Silent Hill into the modern day, that at the end of this rebuild, he tells us that he wants to make Silent Hill 2 from scratch in Unreal 4 as well. And if you want to see that happen and invest in him, check out his Patreon, which again, I'll pop the link for that in the description below. 
Now I haven't put much of my own gameplay up here because, as I've mentioned, it's only really a half hour or so experience. I don't want to ruin anything for those of you who may never have played it. If you're one of those people, make no mistake, this is a hell of an opportunity for you as a horror fan. After playing it again, I remembered just how much video game horror needed, and still needs, Kojima. Horror in games of the last few generations was getting stuck in a rut. Resident Evil 6 was a ridiculous Michael Bay-like action fest, and Dead Space was killed off. After EA saw microtransactions introduced to its third instalment, and we won't be seeing any more of that after EA got through with Visceral Studios last year, which of course we all know about. A few games like Resident Evil 7 and Layers of Fear are floating around out there, but what was so impressive about PT was that in just 30 minutes or so, it had achieved things that no horror game had ever done before. You didn't play PT, it played you, and you were chillingly powerless to do anything about that. Kojima blew us away in Metal Gear Solid 1 when he fooled us into thinking Psycho Mantis had deleted our save file, and that same skill in messing with our expectations of what a video game can bring shone through in the short time that we had with PT. It wasn't just a game that was exciting as a reboot for Silent Hill fans, which would eventually inform the design of Resident Evil 7. It was also exciting for just fans of horror in general. That peripheral blink of an eye tension torture was smart as hell, as we've come to expect of Kojima, perhaps, with Kojima, Del Toro and Redis still chums for the creation of Death Stranding, a little ray of hope could be held onto that the trio may one day work again on their original passion project. Thank you so much for tuning in guys, thanks for sticking with me all the way through there. If you're still here and you enjoyed this video, go right ahead and press that subscribe button. This is Nick for The Game Sesh, signing out for now. Take care guys.